What is up, everybody? Uh, not the legislative director, Jason Thompson. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I am not not the legislative director. I see, I think it's two nots. Uh, Manda Moyo, and I'm joined today, really excited to be joined for the season four premiere of the legislative director talking about legislative things. Uh, I'm joined by Amber, uh, who is your very own legislative director, and Addison Pollock, who is the not not legislative director, along with me uh, as well. And so we're really excited to be here today. Uh, Jason, your usual host, uh, is uh, on a special assignment. Uh, that's what he told us. I don't know if that's true or not. I can't confirm it, but that's what he told us. So he is on interim assignment for a couple of months. So you will see some version of myself or Addison uh, hosting the show with Amber and joining uh, her here as well. So Addison, how are you doing, my friend? Amber, how are you doing? I'm feeling great. I'm glad to be here. Good, good. Really excited to join and have you guys on today. We're going to talk about session, obviously, because it's the legislative director talking about legislative things. Uh, we're going to kick it off with, uh, we were going to do a couple of jokes about Jason not being here and being a slacker and all this other stuff, but we'll get those, we'll get to those at the end uh, with, with some shout outs and things like that. So Amber, uh, I'm going to go right to you and, oh, wait a minute. Oh, what is this guy doing? Let this guy in here. What? Got What's going here. on? <laughs> cut. You cut. Are me, right? <laughs> You're kidding, right? I'm, I'm gonna what? let you. I'm. I'm gonna let you finish. But I had to just jump in here real quick. <laughs> what is happening? Say hi. And, and you can tell. You can tell the professionalism in his voice, right? Like he is. He is used to doing this, guys. He is way better <laughs> equipped to do this than we are. But he did tell us he was on interim assignment. And you can see the three of us are wearing ARP gear and he's not. So somebody is slacking somewhere. Is this candid camera? <laughs> this is, this is, this real life? is this real life? <laughs> no, it can't be. Oh no, my it's God. Not. It's, of it's course, not. Dan. Dan, Dan. Producer Dan. He is awesome. He is awesome. <laughs> I love Man, it. I love we it. Jason's here with us. How we That's were going to go on without you. Uh, <laughs> this is amazing. So now Feels you get better. to stay the whole time? No, Jason is he's frozen now. Oh. Look at this. Uh oh. It's a plot twist, season four. <laughs> tech, tech issues with Jason. Hold that. Yeah. Hold that. Hold that. I'm going to take a picture of Jason's face. Oh, he left. Oh, okay. he left. Just like Jason. All right. I'm just kidding. I'm so, back. Okay. <laughs> Psych out. This is the best kickoff to season four, I think. <laughs> you know, I I had to be here just oh, because man. I couldn't help myself. Um, it's good to see you guys. Good to see you too, man. Uh, uh, long time no those, see. Yeah, for those following along at home, um, you probably don't know this, and I don't know why you'd care. <laughs> but we're going to tell you anyway. Um, I am on an interim assignment with the uh, this is, as producer Dan. Great to see your comments again. This is definitely hashtag inside baseball. Uh, a little peek behind the AARP curtain. Um, I am on an interim assignment with the organization that has taken me away from my uh, Indiana duties and the Indiana team. And uh Hence why I'm not really a part of this show right now, but I wanted to crash the season opening so I could say, hey, and it's, it's all good. So what's, hey, what are we talking about? What's going on? I don't even know. Is the legislature in session? What's happening? They are in session and we were kicking, we were getting ready to kick it on to our very own legislative director, Amber Marr, to talk to us a little bit about what's happening during session this year. So Amber, with all that excitement, uh, Jason's back, uh, somewhat <laughs> back this in is, hosting, hosting mode. Uh, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna slide out of here real quick. I just wanted to do it quick. I wanted to crash it, say hello. Um, <laughs> oh, I thought you were I gonna can, stay. You just stick around. I you just, can you just host? I, I can stick around for a couple minutes. That's fine. I just I did just pull out of the Kool Aid, man. I just busted in. Oh yeah. What's going on? Um, uh, by the way, you probably did hear us. I don't know where you were in the background. We tried to do the opening like you multiple times. Yeah. Like, what is happening, uh, everybody? What is going on, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the Leslie Director 
talking about legislative things, here she is. Much like the <laughs> post office, neither rain, no sleet, or dark of night. See, Amber Marr can't. is bringing you, not the mail, <laughs> but legislative wins uh, during a session that is not correct or right and full of legislators trying to pull some garbage <laughs> during a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we 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 couldn't we couldn't get it we couldn't get it all in like like Jason did, but that's all right. Uh, just, with that's that, fine. It, with that yeah, I'll let you, I'll let I'll let you, Amber. You you take it away. Uh, you guys just uh, enjoy the show, have fun. Um, I could I'll stick around for a few minutes if you want me to, but I really think it's just this is you guys. Like a blackjack dealer, I'm out uh, for a little while. I'll see you in the summer. Uh, <laughs> when my assignment's over and then we can get back at it but in the meantime but i'm you guys look great thank and, you and thanks for those for of you listening you it sound great too <laughs> um, thanks jace can't say uh we don't we we do miss you around around the office man uh well that's, the virtual nice. office uh, i miss and, you guys as well you know we, Obviously, we, because we, I just crashed the show. We heard, special, we heard special assignment. We don't know what that means, but hey, if you tell us you're on a special assignment, you're on a special Dude, assignment. It's, I'm like a spy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it sounds important. It, it, yeah, it, it, sounds, yeah, it legitimately sounds Special sounds assignment, important. you know, interim assignment, interim whatever you want to call it. I don't yeah. know. It's temporary, yeah. and I'll be back soon before you know it. Um, but yeah, cool. Legislation. <laughs> it's happening see this is really not that much different from when i was here i still don't have a clue what's going on and you still don't have any notes <laughs> i still don't have notes i'm just busting in here like what's up um so well, connie uh, style we're kicking it off with what happened to uh the governor's uh veto because yeah. the senate brought it back for a vote, um, whether they sustained the veto or actually voted to override it. Uh, it was SEA 148 from last year, if you guys can remember that far back. I know a lot has happened since then, but I am actually gonna toss it to Mandala to discuss sure. kind of what happened because uh, Mandala is my um, right hand when it comes to housing information. So Mandela, do you want to talk just a little bit about what SEA 148 did and then what happened? And I'm happy to give the final vote. Yeah. So uh, as Amber mentioned, SEA 148 uh, was originally a bill that dealt with uh, manufactured homes. Uh, and so the, 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 the bill went through the process and towards the end of session last year, uh, some re some language was inserted into it that would dramatically shift the uh, landlord tenant uh, relationship in the state of Indiana. Uh, we felt that um, it was important for us to one make sure that both the landlords and tenants had an opportunity to have a voice in it, that 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 much of a change in in that relationship. Uh, and then the other piece that was important it preempted local communities from. Uh, either strengthening their own um, landlord tenant laws or um, changing or adapting them in any way. So that to us felt really, really um, as something that we needed to engage on. And so we did. Uh, and then as you all know already, the governor did veto that um, in March of 2020, if you all can remember that far back. And so as Amber mentioned, uh, just uh, this week, uh, the Senate did vote to override that um, that veto, which means that the bill automatically becomes law. Correct? That it's not like a July one type thing. Does that is that what? Is yeah, that what? it will after the House takes action. The House has to yeah, vote so on the override as well. Okay, so what that means is that local communities um, have been preempted from making any sort of adjustments to their landlord tenants' rights. Um, we have sh dramatically shifted um, the balance of power uh, and put it in the landlord's hands. Um, and I think the biggest piece, which a lot of folks made this argument on both, on both sides to some degree, um, we didn't have an opportunity to have an open conversation about 
um, the rights that are afforded tenants. And I think that's, that has been our position as ARP as well, is that let's just have this in a form of a bill. Um, and that was never, never the case, right? The language was inserted into, um, at the time, Senate Bill 148, uh, which then became Senate Enrolled Act 148 um, after it passed. And so we've never had an opportunity to discuss the um, merits of the concerns of sort of the landlords, uh, as well as uh, what Indiana can do to protect its tenants. And so we felt that it was important for us to oppose um, that bill and provide a testimony. Um, and also Amber uh, and myself were a part of a coalition that has continued to engage around this issue. So, you know, it, it, it was it was it, it was tough to see, uh, but my hope is that at some point we will have an opportunity to have a conversation around um, what rights tenants can be afforded, and then what local community what rights local communities have um, to engage the landlords that serve their community. So, in a nutshell, the over the override uh, did pass, um, and Amber has the specifics in terms of numbers. Uh, but it was it was really tough to see uh, this week. Thank you, Mandela. Yeah, the final vote for the veto override was 30 to 17. So uh, it now moves to the House for uh, where they will take the same action um, as far as whether they vote to sustain the veto or they vote to override it. So we will see how that goes. Um, and the sort of along those same lines, House Bill 1541 was a landlord tenant bill that was uh, on the committee schedule for sort of the day after the, the veto override occurred. And since the veto override um, happened, it was pulled from the calendar because House Bill 1541 was essentially SEA 148 minus a few words. Uh, so that did not get a hearing and probably will not because if the veto override is, um, it continues to occur, they will use that vehicle, obviously. So there are other housing bills, um, coming up and we will get more into that in a later episode, uh, since we are doing our first episode, uh, a month after the new year <laughs> has already started, there is a lot to discuss. So we're gonna kind of go through just a few things and we'll catch you all up as we continue to move forward with our uh, recordings. So um, after we are moving on from housing, we will talk about, let's see, I'll give a quick update then on the Senate Bill 47. Um, it is the Coronavirus Disease Immunizations Bill. And actually this one has already made it all the way through the Senate. Uh, the final vote was 49 to zero. The bill actually allows pharmacy pharmacists, excuse me, to give the COVID-19 vaccination. Right now they have the ability to do that under the CARES Act, um, but due to the emergency authorization approval, um, that the CARES Act where they are allowed to give this vaccination will eventually sunset. Um, there is a date on that. So we just wanted to make sure that they were allowed to continue to give the COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, so we supported that bill and worked with the Pharmacy Association and it has successfully moved through the process with no opposition. So we're really excited to continue to allow um, access and other ways uh, that individuals can get vaccinated since obviously the pharmacists can uh, give the flu vaccine and other vaccinations. So we wanted to continue to make sure that they were allowed to be uh, a part of the COVID-19 vaccination um, you know, situation as well. So um, then we'll move on and I'll kind of throw this to Addison too. We're kind of moving around really quick because we, we don't want to keep you here for hours and hours. Um, the state budget, House Bill 1001, is being heard this week as well. And um, I have been working with both of um, these gentlemen, including other people on our staff, but there's a lot in the budget that we're watching. Um, that would include Adult Protective Services, the Choice Program, um, and you know the state long-term care ombudsman. <clears throat> excuse me, um, making sure that the uh, COVID-19 federal funds are prioritized. 
uh, for Indiana's long-term services and supports. And then also the Indiana Adult Guardianship Office that we are um, all of these things that we're following in the budget, not to mention the Public Mass Transit Fund. And Addison has been doing a lot of that work um, behind the scenes for us. And I wanted to throw it to him to sort of discuss kind of where we are and what we're trying to do. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on, Amber. Uh, it's good to be here, everybody. So as Amber alluded to, House Bill 1001 is the uh, budget bill, the biennium budget bill. Uh, this happens every couple years at the state house. Um, this basically funds the state government and things that the government funds uh, for the next couple years. And as Amber talked about, a budget is basically a set of priorities and we wanna make sure that transit is a priority in the budget bill. This year, um, Due to COVID-19 and its impacts on state revenues, um, we were anticipating the uh, the proposed budget, the governor's proposed budget, to actually um, to pull back on transit funding. Um, but to our surprise, um, Governor Holcomb actually wants to maintain funding for um, what's called the Public Mass Transportation Fund. He wants to maintain that uh, at its 2019-2021 uh, levels. And that is our position. AARP Indiana would like to see that funding remain at its remain constant because you know anytime you take funding away from something, it takes that much more time and effort to build that fund back up. So um, the line item, the public mass transportation fund is set at $45 million in Governor Holcomb's budget bill or proposed budget, which is the current form in the House Bill 1001. So we're starting from a good place. Um, we are hopeful that we can move that budget bill out of the House Ways and Means Committee to the House floor and then over to the Senate by maintaining that $45 million uh, line item amount. Um, basically, we believe that you know a cut to transit is a cut to economic recovery. So um, you know that's the stance we're taking. You know while the state is struggling to and, and Hoosiers across the state are struggling to maintain employment. They're struggling to get to their doctor's appointments and whatnot. Um, taking away a tool that helps people you know get around their communities is uh, is not a not a smart thing to do. So we want to maintain that funding level um, and then. Yeah, we want to just take it from there and see uh, how we can build on transit in the future. So uh, if you're listening to this right now, if you're watching this, uh, if you want to reach out to your state legislator, uh, state legislators, and just talk about how you how much you value transit or any of the things that Amber outlined, uh, that's critically important. Excellent. Thanks, Addison. <laughs> Yeah, no and then Amber, I, I just wanted to make uh, one thing clear though. One of the people that you are not working with currently is one Jason Thompson. He is on sort of an interim assignment is the message <laughs> that he got, he shared with us. So I just wanted to make sure it made that clear too, that he wasn't included in the folks that we're, we're working with. We're sad about it. We're really sad about no, it. No, yeah. I, I don't have a clue what's going on. <laughs> yeah, why is he it's still funny. here? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I was just, just going just... to say that, hey, Jason, have you learned anything since you've been on this call? <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, this has been very good for me. It's like, you know, instead of watching it on my computer or my phone and listening to it, like I'm like in the room. And so this is like where the <laughs> magic happens. Um, and so I, it's a little bit, it sounds like it's a bit of a mixed bag thus far uh, of, you know, what's so what's wait, going on, but. What you were That's saying true. is we have an audience of one. <laughs> <laughs> we at least were guaranteed one Look, from Jason. It's I am, you know, super fan of the show. Um, even if I'm not participating in it normally. Uh so either way, it's good. Uh you guys are doing good work. I'll let you guys continue in teaching folks. Uh <laughs> and I can I can I can bow out for the second segment here and just let you guys do your thing. Um just say that you're you're doing you're doing great work keep at it uh miss you guys we'll I'll, I'll be seeing you soon we'll get to to work on issues again together you know if you get into some high speed internet action or you know some energy work uh that's kind of the areas I'm focusing in on until my assignment's up so maybe we'll we'll get to we'll get to do some of that um coming up but in the meantime yeah you know do your thing this is a, I kind of, I kind of dig this format with everybody in here. It was, it's, it's, I it's nice. <laughs> it's nice. 
You guys may have found yourselves permanently part of the show as well. Uh, We're just going to keep on on growing it. They have. Don't let them fool you. At least this session. Yeah. Look. Season four, you always got to shake it up, right? You can't, you yep. know, change the new format and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, with the new cast members. So <laughs> I'm gonna and 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 I'll now kind of get written off the show temporarily. So in the meantime, you guys keep on carrying on. Uh, keep working yeah. hard. Good to see you guys, Dan. Thanks for letting me uh, secretly. Thanks for helping me secretly put this together. So if you get mad, you can blame Dan for some of this because he knew what was going on. Um, <laughs> So well, there you thanks go. Thanks for stopping by, Jason. Hey, really yeah. Always good to see you guys. See you, see you, see you, Take Jason. care. That guy. That man. guy oh, man. I wonder what's going to happen to his character in later seasons. We'll yeah, see. I don't, yeah, me too. Yeah, what? That, that was a plot twist. The interim assignment yeah. was a plot twist, man. Nobody was expecting that. Um, no. Yeah. Sorry, Amber. I, I, I wanted to make sure that people knew that he was still on interim assignment, whatever that means. Uh, obviously we're giving jason a hard time guys we know you love him we love him too we just want to give him a hard time hey he's a jokester just like us so we 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 want to make sure we he gets gets a little ribbing um while he's away so amber sorry back to the session no that was a fantastic surprise so we don't have much time left so i'm just going to go through a couple more and then we will be back with you um hopefully next week uh with further updates with my wonderful colleagues that are with me today, I'm going to invite them back. Anyway, uh, so we I wanted to just touch on Senate Bill 3 and House Bill 12, 1286. Those are both telehealth matters bills. Um, they are pretty much the same, um, minus a few amendments that have gotten inserted along the way. Basically, these uh, particular bills have been trying to uh, put into law what was done during the pandemic and then also continue to remove barriers for individuals to um, access health care via the phone, via the Internet, um, on you know, your computer, on whatever device you, you use at, in your homes. And so it's really trying to get people to uh, make sure that they can still get health care. Um, especially during a pandemic when you were leaving your home, but also even when we're not in a pandemic and you are a caregiver caring for a loved one or you are someone who is homebound, um, et cetera. So we were very supportive of those two bills and are going to continue to follow them through the process. Let's see, uh, Senate Bill 3 passed out of the full Senate already, 47 to zero. And then House Bill 1286 has already made it out of committee uh, 11 to zero. So another bill that is moving very quickly with no opposition. So we're really excited to see that uh, move forward and we'll continue to keep you posted. So I really think that might be all the time we have. Uh, I'm just going to... Oh, Real quick, I, sorry, Amber. <laughs> we spoke too soon. One, 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 one more bill, one more bill that I'm going to jack, I'm gonna oh jack up. Gosh. One more bill that I'm yes. going to take, take, take action for. Thank you. Uh, so real you quick, guys, you guys. I can't. I can't, it takes a village, you guys. You see this? It takes a village. Okay, go. Really, really quickly, real fast. Uh, Senate Bill 141 uh, is uh, the Central Indiana Transport uh, Transit Projects Bill. Uh, it is a bill that would drastically cripple Indigo's ability to build out its uh, BRT and expanded bus service lines. And so we're hoping, we're submitting testimony for uh, the hearing that's happening this week. Um, and then working alongside our friends at Transit Drives Indy uh, to make sure that the Senate Appropriations Committee votes uh, no on that bill. And just to give you a quick synopsis of what that bill is asking, it's asking A, for Indigo to raise 10% um, of its uh, operating funds um, elsewhere, and then 25% from its uh, fare box. The 10% piece, um, it is our understanding that Indigo has met that threshold. Um, and then there's conversation to be had around the 25% piece as well. So our hope, A, is that appropriations votes no on the bill uh, this week. And if not, um, ARP and our partners are definitely looking forward to having a conversation with Senator Freeman and others about how we can make sure we don't uh, do unintentional or intentional harm to Indigo's budget uh, through this bill. So just wanted to make sure we put that put that out there uh, before we signed away. Thank you. That was 
very important and I cannot believe I was going to leave that out. Thanks for uh, helping me there. Uh, so now I do think we are out of time, um, but there are, those were very pressing issues that are happening this week. And before we close out, I just wanted to make sure that we continued with um, our normal at the end of the show and give our shout outs. So if you guys don't mind, I would love to also uh, entertain your shout outs, but I will, while you're thinking on it, I'm going to just throw a couple out and then I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll throw them to you guys so that you can uh, let everyone know what you will, who you will, you will be giving to your shout out. Uh, so I would first like to start with Representative Clear and Senator Lannon. They have both joined our volunteer legislative team meetings over the past month and given a wonderful update on not only session, but bills that we're, that we're following, that, they're follow, that they are authors of and what they're doing, um, sort of a background on what COVID-19 looks like there. And so I think our um, volunteers were very grateful. I was very grateful that they took the time uh, to join us and give us some background. So that is, those are, those are my two shout outs. And then also just on a personal note, I would like to give a shout out to uh, a wonderful person who is, um, took a step back from uh, her work life uh, to do what is absolutely honorable and to care for her family during times of COVID-19, Erin uh, Macy. Uh, she was my partner in crime at the State House. Um, and I know she's not gone. Uh, she will still be volunteering for things, but we just wanted to talk and give her a shout out for her amazing work and all of the things that she has done for Hoosiers across the state and things that I know she will continue to do as well as care for those amazing children of hers. So um, I just wanted to make sure we said that and I will uh, probably be talking about her throughout the show since I will not yeah, be she, able to she, uh, <laughs> talk to her right. about this. Yes, oh yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. We, have to, we promised her we, we would have oh, her on the show. Never, okay. I told her she could oh, wow. still come back and be a guest. I told yeah. her this. So she okay. is going okay. to be um, on the show at some point. I told her All that's right. not going away. So anyway, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. It took too much time. She is amazing. And I just wanted to make sure that on the first season, uh, uh, I'm the first episode of season four that we were able to talk about her. Um, okay, Mandela, Addison, all you. Yeah, so Mother. really quickly, um, Amber talked about the vaccine work, um, the legislation piece. Uh, my shout out is going to go to to producer Dan. You guys don't know him, uh, don't see him, but producer Dan, uh, Dan Domzik on our team uh, has been doing amazing work around uh, our vaccine outreach work. Uh, and so really just wanted to make sure I gave him a shout out and kudos uh, for the work that he's doing to get our volunteers out there calling our members. Uh, to let them know where they can go to get that, the, the information they need uh, to make the best choices around getting vaccinated. So real big shout out to, to Dan for, for that. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> totally. 100%. And then I will um, just kind of on the same note, I will plug our volunteers. So two, two, two um, you know, factions of our volunteers. One is the group that's actually making the calls to uh, Hoosiers across the state, informing them about, you know, the state's vaccination efforts and, you know, where they can find that information. So uh, we have a really good group of folks who are making calls. And then the other one is the um, our unsung heroes uh, right now because they're not over at the state house, but our legislative team. Those folks are volunteers from across the state who are emailing legislators and, um, you know, sharing information about these uh, critical bills that we're following. So um, yeah, hooray volunteers. They do our, they do the best work. All right. Well, that was season four. Uh, we're excited, episode one. Uh, so we'll see, you know, you'll see me and Addison make appearances as much as we can to, to make sure uh, Amber um, is not alone and not, hang, and not hanging out solo and flying solo through um, session. So you guys stay tuned to more information uh, and we will see you guys next time. Big shout out to Jason too for joining us. Uh, we miss you brother uh, and all the best on your interim assignment. Thanks guys. <laughs>